I don't know if you've experienced this, but this is a very common phenomenon with me. I shoot almost exclusively in bright sunlight where it's super, super bright and you're squinting your eyes and I'm taking flash pictures in bright sunlight. And usually I have the person's back to the sun. So I'm looking into the sun and I'm filling in the shadow of the face and I'm using strobes. So bright that my eye, you know, when you go in from bright sunlight into a darker room, everything's black for a while and then your eyes take a while to adjust. And then after a while, you start to see what's in that room. Well, the same thing with the viewfinder. It's super bright. I'm looking in here to see if I got the right exposure and everything looks too dark. So I adjust the camera to make everything brighter. And then I go into the computer at the end of the day and I look at all the pictures and they're all too bright. Well, what happened was my eye hadn't adjusted yet when I was looking in the viewfinder and my eye and my mind thinks that everything is too dark because I was just looking in bright sunlight I don't know if you're following me here, but when your eyes are looking at less sunlight, your eyes try to make everything darker to compensate. So when I'm looking in the viewfinder, everything is looks too dark, where actually it's probably perfectly exposed, but to me it looks too dark. So I'm, I adjust to make the f-stop or the aperture brighter, everything brighter, and I end up with a whole bunch of overexposed pictures. So how do I know if the flash is properly exposed? That's what I'm here to show you today on how to do, because that is kind of a tricky situation. Um, normally, what? I'm just oh. curious. <laughs> uh, a normal, ex when you're not taking flash, that's easy. You have like zebra stripes and you can tell that you can program, you know, that come in, but not with flash pictures. There, there is no way to put zebra stripes on a picture you've already taken in the camera. I called Sony. I talked to all the Sony techs and they said, nope, we don't have that. I said, well, maybe you should put it in there. I take a flash picture. I look in the camera. There should be zebra stripes on the picture I've already, I've just taken so I can see if it's overexposed or not because I can't trust my eye. Now I know there's things you're going to say. Look at the histogram. No, that doesn't work. It's everybody says histogram, schmistogram. It okay for she's wearing all white. If I took a picture of this, there would be a lot of stuff on the bright side. Or if she's wearing all black, or if she's standing against the black wall or a white wall, the histogram is going to be totally all over the place. You don't know what part of that histogram is the face. Her face is only this much of the picture. The picture is all this. What I need is a histogram of just the face. Now you can say you can zoom in on the face really close. That's really not the best way to do it because this changes all the time. So I need something that doesn't change. Hold this. And that is the uh, ever trusty almighty gray card. Gray card. Yes. This does not change. Her face changes, but this doesn't. So I have her hold this in front of her and I take a flash picture, and then I look at the histogram. That's one way to do it. Now, it's not perfectly in the center, but another way to tell is that when you take a picture, at least on Sony, they have these flashing overexposed marks. So the parts that are white or overexposed are flashing, and that's only for the overexposed part. That's the only thing that I can look at from a picture that I just took, other than histogram, which I don't like. So I noticed that on the gray card, when I take a picture, the, the exposure seems to be correct if this white frame is lightly blinking. If it's heavily blinking, then I know I am overexposed. If it's not blinking at all, then I know it's slightly underexposed. So that's a good way to tell, at least for me, is if this little white border on here is lightly blinking. Now I know what some of you are going to say, use a grayscale and see if the white part blinks. The standard Kodak grayscale does not have enough gradations. It doesn't even blink on the white, like it's not even pure white at the end. So what I did is I printed out a, I went online and I just Googled grayscale and I found one that has 22 values of light to dark. Now this one is better. I did find that this one has more things to choose from. And if it is properly exposed, the first one starts blinking and or pure white is barely blinking. But if it's two or three, if they're slightly blinking, then it's too overexposed. So this one, this is another way of doing it is having a whole bunch of different uh, values of gray. And another way is to have a, a monitor. A, a, this is a Ninja here, but you have to plug in an HDMI cable and then you turn it on. And now you can look at the picture you just took and this has zebra stripes. So now you can get zebra stripes on a picture that you already took that's in your camera. Camera can't do it, but this can. So now I can set it in and I can set my zebra stripes where the zebra stripes come in 
and it also has a different type of graph. So there's two different ways of telling on here if it's exposed. But do you really want to do this when you're out, you know, you're in, you're in a run and gun situation, you're sweating, the model's sweating, you got to take the pictures quickly. Do you really want to take time to do this? You know, it would be really great if a camera could just put zebra stripes on a picture that you've already taken to see if it's overexposed or underexposed. How possible is that? Is it like impossible to do that or? Well, if everybody out there contacted Sony and Canon and Nikon and said, please add this feature in your camera, that would be great. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll listen, you know, and then like three generations of cameras from now, they'll actually have it in here. But until now, you're on your own. So obviously, as all you can say, well, just use a damn light meter. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, you know, it's actually not accurate if you're using high speed sync. It's different than if you're using just basic low speed sync. There are a few high speed sync flash meters. You can use a flash meter, but geez, I mean, again, now you have to go through another step. And I don't like having to go through all these damn steps to just tell if the picture is exposed properly or not. Um, so anyway, what I find is the gray card seems to be the best thing. Not only can you white balance, but you can also tell if it's somewhat properly exposed by seeing if the white edge is lightly blinking, not heavily blinking. Um, that's a quick, quickest one, because we have this anyway. We have the white balance card with us at all times anyway. Um, totally board the board. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, just shoot it raw. You can fix everything in post. You know, that to me is a cop out. I want to get it right. And I'm, when I'm shooting the picture, I don't want to have to fix 2000 pictures down the road. And even if you shoot in raw, if the, if the foreground is overexposed and the background is underexposed in the same picture, then you have to go in there. Are, are you going to outline every single hair on the head to, get, and to make everything within that mask? you know, change, change the exposure. That is ridiculous. I want to get it right in the first place. I want to get the exposure correct. So the foreground and the background are the correct exposure without having to adjust for it later on and spend all this time in the computer doodling on it. You know, a good photographer gets it right, right away in the camera. So, uh, so there. So those are the ways that I suggest seeing if your flash exposure is correct. That's different than the ambient exposure. Anybody can tell if the ambient exposure is, is overexposed or unexposed, but seeing if your flash, in other words, the foreground that's being flashed, if that's overexposed or not, or underexposed, that's the way to, uh, I find, works for me. If you have any other bright ideas, let me know, I'm open to it. But that's what I find works for me, and I hope this helped you somehow. And you just be aware that when you look in the viewfinder on a bright, sunny day, what you see in the viewfinder, what you think you see is probably lighter than it really is. Or no, it's, 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 yeah, because your eye adjusts for it and thinks that it's darker than that. It might be actually properly exposed. Um, so uh, just be aware of that. Your eye is the, is, the, is the part that you shouldn't trust. Don't trust your eye. Trust something mechanical or electronic that will tell you exactly the correct exposure of what you're getting. All right. I hope this helped. We're gonna take some pictures now and hope they're properly exposed. So I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.